Cannibalism includes conscientious acts of piety and self-sacrifice in providing food for relatives in times of hunger, the partial consumption of the bodies of dead relatives as a ritual of continuity, and the capture and consumption of enemies in war. There are two different kinds of cannibalism which are defined by anthropologists, exocannibalism and endocannibalism. Cannibalism has consistently been othered by Western society, where it has been put forth as either an act of barbarianism that only exists in primitive and uncivilized societies, or is committed by an anomalous psychopath. Colonialists use cannibalism to legitimize their conquest by addressing their need to civilize and cultivate indigenous peoples, as they propagated the notion that people who engaged in such acts were savages. Such misconception has resulted in prejudicial views about cannibalism that persist still today in contemporary Western society. Funerary cannibalism, however, is an endocannibalistic practice which is inherently compassionate in nature, thus defying the common perception of cannibalism. Funerary rites entailing cannibalism have been most notably studied amongst indigenous tribes in Melanesia and the Amazonian rainforest. Guari people who inhabit the forests of the Brazilian state of Rondonia are a tribe comprised of only about 1,500 members and have been studied extensively by anthropologist Beth Conklin and have been noted for their practices of funerary cannibalism. In her studies, she discussed how the Wari traditionally disposed of nearly all their dead by eating the flesh, brains, heart, liver, and sometimes the ground bones. In funeral rites, the eating of the dead expressed honor and compassion for the person who was eaten. It also expressed key religious values and affirmed social commitments between the dead person and the Wari tribal members. In describing the Wari practices of endocannibalism, Shepard states that Wari funerals include cathartic displays of emotions such as hugging or cradling the corpse, wailing, and keening. At the end of the funeral ritual, bereaved Wari are forced radically to overcome their emotional attachment to the deceased loved one by butchering, cooking, and consuming the body. Surviving worry family members also burn the dead person's house, possessions, and discarded objects in an attempt to eliminate all material reminders of the loved one's absence. He asserted that the reason the Wari people engaged in funerary cannibalism relates back to their concept of personhood, which emphasizes notions of shared substance, meaning the idea that individuals exchange substances between their bodies and that these corporeal substances impart qualities of identity to those who incorporate them. Thus, in consuming the body of deceased members of their community, they are incorporating that person's identity and personhood into themselves. The Yanomamo are another tribe located in the Amazon rainforest of Brazil near the Venezuelan border who perform funerary cannibalism. However, they practice endocannibalism differently than the Wari. Instead of consuming roasted body parts, the Yanomamo burn a deceased person's body until it is completely turned into ash. This ash is mixed into a plantain soup to be drunk by the close members of kin. The following segment from Andy Drilling's documentary, The Spirits of the Rainforest, on the Yanomamo people depicts this process. <laughs> Ware and Yanomamo both practice funerary cannibalism in different ways, but the intent behind these acts holds similar purpose in showing respect for deceased members of their respective societies. Both of these cultures additionally serve to exemplify the way in which cannibalism moves beyond the assumptions that is exclusively a barbaric act and instead shows it as a means of honoring an individual through ritual. <laughs>